Today, I'll be focusing on very important concepts. What are the mediation and moderation? How we can develop them? What should be included? And what are the different types of the moderator? So learning outcome would be differentiation between mediation and moderation, very important, yet, you know, very uh, debatable uh, concept, okay? Because many people, they can use the same variable as a mediator and you have seen the similar variable in some research, it have been used as a moderator. So what parameters we can define which variable can be considered as a, as a mediator and what can be considered as a moderator. Very important concept. And then we have theoretical perspective and development from where these words came from and how, how we in, apply them in our research. Then what are the different types of the mediation, okay? Because mediation is not one uh, step process. So we need to work on different aspects, okay? And then testing mediations. Now, different approaches to testing this mediation is available. And I will go through a few of these basic uh, concepts, which from the start, from, uh, for example, from Baron and Kenny, and then the latest development and how we test the mediation. Remember now the software, especially this uh, smart PLS4 or any relative software, they made our work very simple. Now we can test mediation on single step. But when I started this uh, statistical analysis and data analysis processes, it was not easier for us to test the mediation. There are many complexities which we were going through. And now we reach to this point where we can test everything in a very simple manner. So I will take you to, through that journey so you can understand the different options you have to test the mediation. It is not just one click or one software. It is depending on a lot of statistics which is behind these concepts, okay? And then similarly, we'll be talking about testing the mediations. Then we'll talk about the moderation. And finally, we'll see how we can test the moderations, okay? So this is uh, the important content. But concern is, identify and understand mediation and moderation, and then how we can test the mediation and moderation. What are the different methods, okay? So I will share this video later on as well on your portal, but this is very important and it can be considered as the rule of thumb for you while you are running your analysis, okay? Because during your uh, final, maybe defense, during your uh, research paper review, the reviewers or your examiner, they can ask you about these details and then you should have your answer ready with you. Why you use this method? What are the basic, why you choose this variable as a mediator? Is there any logic for you? Is there any relevant material for you? So these are important concerns which I'm going to take you through today, okay? So let's talk about the mediation. A very simple thing, but very, you know, disturbing as well. So mediation, this is just for mediation. Uh, I took this definition from Wikipedia and this definition gives me, you know, a lot of food for thought about the mediation. It's a controversial process because uh, some people will argue, okay, if you use one variable as a mediator, it can be used as a moderator as well as. So there are a lot of debates around this mediation and moderation and unfortunately, all of them are true and none of them is right, okay? So sorry to say this, but this is a very controversial process. Uh, the people make this very complex. I'm not sure why, but once we learn, it will become very easy for you, okay? So the mediation was started where, you know, uh, there is any dispute between two parties and the third party will come in and solve your problem. That is, uh, you know, from the law perspective, this is the, definition of mediator. We all know about this disputes and then the third party involvement in that. Okay, so this third party is named as intermediary or mediator. That is the party which have relationship with your party one and party two as well. So it have relationship with both aspects, okay? And then it, because these two parties, they respect the third party and they, they, they you know, they approve the decisions 
made by this party to solve uh, any or to resolve any dispute. So that's why this mediator have the relationship with the party A and party B as well. Just giving you a ba background of this uh, mediation process. Okay, so this, this is the same applicable on a mediator process. Okay, so mediator is a variable. In this case, or in most of the case, we discuss the mediator, which can you know, explain the relationship between variable A and variable B, mean that independent and dependent variables, okay? So in some cases, the relationship between these two variables are not complete, so that we need another variable that can explain the relationship, that kind of dispute between these two variables that should be resolved with the mediation process. I will explain with some examples as well, very simple example. Okay, so the mediation model is very simple, a model which contains any um, mediator. And the purpose of that mediator is to explain the relationship between dependent and independent. When I say explain the relationship, you should understand what does it mean. So let me give you one example. For example, there is a relationship between salary and satisfaction. I have given this example many times. Okay? So we know salary can enhance employee satisfaction. The more salary you receive, the more satisfied you are. Very simple uh, dynamic. But the question is this, we, we, we do not eat salary directly. We, we don't eat money, okay? So what we do, there are some ways through which we receive this you know, satisfaction and which are basically not direct. We do not eat money. So what we do, we spend. And this pattern of spending Maybe you are buying food for those who are, you know, at the basic levels of uh, Maslow's hierarchy, they are using this spending, this money to buy food, and then they are receiving satisfaction. Am I correct? But this is not the case for everybody. Some people, they would like to buy a car to get that satisfaction level. Some people, they should have some other, you know, uh, satisfaction level. So it means that it is not just uh, salary which provide you satisfaction it is actually the way of spending which provides you satisfaction and it it varies with respect to your levels of uh, Maslow hierarchy so if you are at the very basic level obviously you would be happy to buy food fruits or something or shelter or these these would be your basic spending patterns and that will give you satisfaction but when you move more it means that the spending patterns are being change. In this case, the relationship between salary and satisfaction can be explained by your pattern of spending. Okay, so that's, that's the important uh, concept here. So is, is it is it clear? Okay, so uh, this is the first aspect very simple we are clear about the mediation now when you are including any mediation in your model that mediation should explain the the, the nature of that uh, indirect uh, sorry direct relationship between independent and dependent variable the way i explain about the spending it looks very simple because this example is very understandable and very simple but when we apply this concept on your model that might be a little bit difficult okay so that in that case uh, you should be very clear about the nature of relationship between two variables and then where these mediations are coming from how they explain the relationship between independent and dependent variable because in my uh, example it's very simple to understand that the spending is is actually explaining the relationship between the salary and satisfaction because we don't eat it directly, okay? So that's that. That is to make concept very simpler for you, okay? So let's move on with the uh, with the next uh, pattern or next type, which is what are the basic statistical procedures we can use to uh, explain or to analyze mediation and which one is the best because this is a very important and debatable process okay now we were using this four-step model 
at first while while we were using uh, spss and not much of the structural equation was famous at that time so mostly we were using regression analysis to run all these uh, causal effects okay so in that case we were using this baron and canis method i will take you to the old debate which is available in the literature and it confuses uh, you know in in your understanding as well so please understand this and i will give you this video so take this as a reference as well so first time we were using baron and canis 1986 approach remember uh, i have already showed you the model of mediation which is in the previous slide so please uh, make sure you you have this model in your mind okay so this is your uh, mediation model where salary is your independent satisfaction is your dependent and spending is your mediator just consider this example so what are these four steps so the four step model tells us because we don't have any you know statistics to analyze these indirect effects because the purpose is this if we check back this is our mediation so mediation is not direct it is basically an indirect path or indirect analysis because it it contains uh from salary to spending and then spending to satisfaction so that is mediation by definition mediation is not a direct effect it is an indirect effect so to understand or to measure the indirect nature of the effects we we didn't have you know much statistics that's where the problem comes in how we analyze it statistically theoretical development we understood and we are very much clear about this what about the statistical analysis then in 1986 this famous author or famous statistician baron and canny they developed a model for analyzing this in indirect effect or we also name them mediation effects okay so they have four step in mediation process so what they do they will at first step they will analyze independent variable and dependent variable the first condition so your independent and dependent variable the uh, the relationship between these two variable should be significant this is your first step then how we do that we use spss and run the regression analysis and check whether independent and dependent are significant or not so we will run the regression for the first time here then in the second step we will check independent variable and mediator now this is the second step we will run the regression analysis again in the second step and check whether the independent and depend mediator variable have significant relationship or not why we check that the logic is the same if you remember i mentioned that the mediator is a person who have relationship with both parties right so that was the logic behind this mediation analysis so they were testing both relationship independent and mediator then mediator and dependent so mediator was considered as a independent variable and then we were taking a dependent variable as a you know dependent variable in spss and then we will run the regression analysis again so this is step number 3 so once these three conditions are met now this is the time you can include your mediator in your model okay so this this is i think it's not correct uh, independent then mediator and the dependent so this is wrong sorry okay so consider this independent plus mediator and then we test those uh, variables on your um, dependent variable okay so this is step number 4 but remember step number 4 only and if only you can satisfy all three steps then you will move to the step number 4 where you will have two independent variable which is your independent and mediator and then you have a mediator or the, uh, sorry a dependent variable so one dependent and two independent that would be step 4 and we will check what are the difference between these uh, you know uh, without the mediator and with the mediator and we'll do uh, you know mediation analysis so how do we know know that what is uh, in uh, your uh, sorry indirect effect and whether that effect was significant or not 
this question still remain open while we were working with the Baron and Kenny software or Baron and Kenny approach. Okay, you can see here there is no indirect effect because SPSS were unable to you know analyze any indirect effect because they were not structured or they were not using all these uh, different types of the method. So then there is another scientist or statistician we use that very you know famous uh, method which is called Sobel test. Okay, how do we do? Uh, how do we analyze the the hypothesis? If I say uh, salary has an effect on satisfaction by two uh, by by the rule of thumb what we are doing we will be testing the p values which should be above than 1.96 and the p value which should be less than 0 0.05 in that case we can say okay yes our statistics it shows us the hypothesis is accepted okay now this is the case with first three steps but the result is indirect effect and there was no method through which you can calculate a t or p value of indirect indirect method or indirect uh, uh, path okay let me take back to you uh, to, to, to this example for example if i test the salary with satisfaction i can get any value t or p that is no problem because we are using spss or any other software because that, that is a regression, simple regression. So we use salary and spending, we have value here. We have spending and satisfaction, we have value here. But what about the indirect effect, salary, spending, and to satisfaction? For that reason, we need to calculate indirect effect, okay? And what Sobel did, Sobel added another step in your uh, moderating, uh, sorry, mediator analysis. He used these two models. This one is your first, this one is your second, and multiply them to create a indirect effect, okay? And then we were using this uh, Sobel test to you know, calculate T statistics because uh, in Baron and Kenny procedure, there was no T statistics or P values through which we can identify mediator is significant or not. Then we use Sobel test and the Sobel test was very simple. We were multiplying these two paths in order to analyze our you know, indirect effect. And then we create this uh, T values and P values for indirect. So if you want to test it, you just search on uh, Google Sobel test and there would be a calculator uh, online available through which you can use this Sobel test to analyze your mediator, okay? Now, that calculator will ask you to add this path coefficient of this first analysis and then the second analysis and it will give you the result, okay? So that was Sobel test. That is how we were dealing with the mediation in the past, okay? In the past. So don't worry, it, it, it looks complex, but you don't need to use it. So the good thing is we have uh, different options available for uh, testing the mediation. But that was the first method. We started with Baron and Kenny. Then we added Sobel test in order to complete or to calculate the P and T values. Okay. So until here, uh, things are clear. It makes any sense. Any question here, I can just break and then we can move on if if you want to ask any question go ahead please you can unmute your mic or you can type so that was the the initial concepts of mediation now what happens with this statistics we were we are using different models now why i am telling you about this uh Perrin and kenny although we are not using it anymore, but still it is very important concept. Well, we, you know, it's, it's a long debate about the mediator. So that's why it's very simple process to understand how mediation was evolved, okay? So that was the first thing we were using for mediator. We were calculating indirect effect by using Sobel test. And we were using, uh, you know, this test to calculate P and T values. But there were some statistical anomalies in this case because regression analysis, that is a parametric technique. And we were using all these 
parametric statistics. Parametrics means we were using all these normality assumptions uh, in order to move further with the analysis. But this test, the Sobel test, in simple way, because it's only multiply the standard error of these two variables in order to calculate T value. If I show you T formula, you can understand that they are using uh, the standard error of uh, your first regression and the standard error for your regression B. If I, if I say in this figure, A is your uh, first regression and the B is your first second regression result. So they are using standard error, which is SA and SP. But then in 2004, this debate came in when uh, these famous authors, uh, Preacher and Hayes, and Hayes especially, they, they started arguing on this. When we multiply standard error, will they follow normality rules or assumption? No, it's not possible. When two variables are multiplied, there is no guarantee that uh, or uh, standard errors are being multiplied. It doesn't mean that you are uh, talking about the uh, normality anymore. Okay, so that's why they had another suggestions for you. Okay, they said rather than going for these four or five steps or using this uh, sober test. We can have another method, and this is called Preacher and Hayes 2004 bootstrapping method. Okay, what they did, they used a non parametric method, which is called bootstrapping, and taking samples of samples many times and then running the analysis and see whether the results are different, significantly different or not. So, if the results are not significant, it means that. Uh, the, the bootstrapping will tell us, okay, the T value is above than 1.96 and T value is less than 0 0.05, okay? In simple word, to cut this debate very short, uh, Preacher and Hayes, they talked about this uh, process. We call it bootstrapping, which now we are using in structural equation and especially the PLS uh, structural equation, it is all depending on this bootstrapping, but why we use it just to calculate T and T value, just to calculate the significant T value is, should be above than 1.96 and T value should be less than 0 0.05. So there was no other method uh, which exactly can calculate P and T value. We were using Sobel test, but there was some questions on the Sobel test as well. So that's why Preacher and Hayes use the bootstrapping method in order to calculate P and T values for our non, uh, sorry, our indirect effect. Remember the debate is not about the direct effect. It is about the indirect effects, which we alternatively, we are talking about the mediation, okay? So that was the revolution which comes in and then the statistics exactly uh, taking a new shape, which we are looking now. Okay, and then there are many software which were developed based on these techniques. Okay, and then we have Preacher and his uh, processes macros in SPSS. Now, SPSS is also uh, able to calculate indirect effect using these process macros and bootstrapping. So, this is all software were taking opportunity in order to solve this statistical issue. Okay, so that was basically your. Uh, mediation process. So that's uh, Preacher and Hayes method. So let's talk about this more. Now we do understand what is mediation. Mediation is technically indirect effect. Okay. And in the indirect effect, there was different methods to calculate this indirect effect. The first one was Barron and Kenny, which were depending on multiple steps, four steps model, and then still it was unable to calculate the P and T values of that indirect effect. For that reason, we were using Sobel test, okay? But then Sobel tests also have problem. And then the famous method of bootstrapping was invented by uh, this preacher and his, or with the, uh, that reshaped everything in terms of our understanding in, about the mediation and moderation. So, but still the mediation is mainly focused on calculating that in direct effect, okay? Now, what are the different types of the mediation? Two most famous types of the mediation. 
the full mediation and the partial mediation. Remember that this method, which I must say you are using even now in Smart PLS 4 and all other software, you are using this bootstrapping method to calculate the mediation. Now we are not using Baron and Kenny or Sobel test. You don't need to worry about that. The, the method we are using in uh, PLS or in any other software for now, it is called Preacher and Haze method. Okay, so that is just to calculate indirect effects. Whether it is significant or not, through bootstrapping, we can calculate P and T value. So anytime, if anybody asks you why you need to use bootstrapping, because we want to calculate P and T values, okay? That is the main purpose of our bootstrapping to make things simpler for you, okay? So if you're, you have a very basic understanding on the statistics. Let me uh, take you through this process more quickly, um, but I'll try to break this video, this live session and, and uh, upload in, in small pages so you can have a small videos of all these concepts that, that makes easy sense for you, okay? Now we have most famous types. Uh, we have full mediation, we have partial mediation. Now how Barron and Kenny define this full and partial mediation? Now Barron and Kenny, they define this partial and full mediation in very simple way. If we include mediation in the direct effect model, let me go back, uh, things are getting a little bit complex here. Okay, now consider this is a mediation model. If you remember Baron and Kenny, the first step was to calculate this direct effect, this one, salary to satisfaction. So once we have calculated this direct effect and it is significant, the next step is to add mediator in the model. Now we have mediator and when we enter the mediator, the direct effect between salary and satisfaction, if it is significant and the mediator effect also significant, it means that the mediation is partial because the effect is going through both um, uh, sides, direct and indirect. So when our direct effect and indirect effect both are significant, we must say that the mediation is partial, okay? But in some cases, when we enter the mediator in the model and the direct effect became insignificant, in that case, it is called a full mediation where there is no direct effect remains. It is only indirect effects which calculates the significance, okay? So that's called the full mediation, okay? Clear? So when we enter mediator in the model, I will teach you how we do this all in the uh, PLS. Don't worry, it is just a theoretical development. So uh, the full mediation means that there is no direct effect, only indirect effect is significant. And in the partial mediation, we have both significant. Now, how to calculate in smart PLS? This is where our work comes in, okay? The rest is just theory. So let's talk about how we can do the mediator analysis in. PLS. There are different methods. Uh, important one is your hair mediation analysis. Okay, what they do, they use the same approach. They will include the mediator in the model. The direct effect is not significant. If the direct effect between the indirect and direct is not significant, there is no mediation effect. You can't go further. But if the direct effect is mediator uh, is significant, then you need to include a mediator in the model, okay? And when you introduce a mediator in the model, we will be calculating this thing, we call it uh, variation accounted for, VAF, okay? And that is the basically ratio between total and indirect effect. If this ratio is greater than 80%, we can say that the mediation is full. If less than 80%, uh, we can say partial. And if it is less than 20%, we will say no mediation. Remember these three things. These are uh, important standards. So while I will be uploading this video of how you can calculate mediation in the Smart PLS, please make sure you understand this, how we calculate this, because 
there are some you know calculations available on this so vef i will tell you how to calculate vef so vef is basically the ratio of indirect to total effect okay so indirect effect divided by total effect so if the ratio of indirect effect is more than 80% means that the the indirect path is having more than 80% contribution in your total effects it mean that uh, you are having full mediation but if not then you will have uh, partial mediation and if it is less than 20% it mean that you are not having any mediation so i will tell you how to calculate them in a separate video uh, on uh, software but this is not for the one software wherever you are doing this analysis you can use this rules uh, not just for smart pls any software can give you these results and you can have some calculation so this is the first method we are not using uh, uh baron and canning method we are using preacher and hayes where we'll be talking about the indirect effects okay and indirect effects in smart pls they are very simple to calculate the theory it looks little bit uh, you know difficult but uh, practical it's very very simple but you should be able to understand what exactly we are calculating okay so we'll be calculating vaf which is the ratio between indirect effect divided by total effect it means the ratio between indirect effect and the total effect if the indirect effect is more than 80% of the total effect we will be saying that the mediation is full otherwise it is partial and if it is less than 20 it means that there is no significant mediation in the model okay now this is here at all but there is another very famous method you can use any of these methods okay it's not one method you can use any of these methods so the second method this method is more like your uh, baron and kenny approach okay so we have indirect effect is significant we have indirect effect is not significant okay so uh, we are talking about uh, the significance of indirect effect is so we'll be checking indirect effect and we'll be checking uh, indirect effect if they are not significant okay so if they are significant and the indirect effect is significant we'll be assessing the direct effects okay so the direct effect when we talk about c dot now direct effect we have two different uh, approaches sahu is is saying that we shall check the indirect effect first if the indirect effect is significant the next step is to check whether the direct effect is significant or not if the direct effect is significant uh, we'll see that with including the the uh, mediator the direct effect is still significant or not if it is still significant again the baron and kenny approach it is a partial mediation here but if it is not included it means that it is full mediation so only indirect effect is significant it means that we are having full mediation and if not we are not having any uh, you know uh, we are having partial mediation okay so uh, that's simple uh, that's simple method and i will take you to this method when we are talking about uh, uh, how we can run the analysis so remember we have here at all method we have zehu we have preacher and hay and we have also uh, this um, baron and canny method remember preacher and hayes they say you can just check the indirect effect you don't need to check the partial and full mediation because as per their understanding this partial mediation and full mediation it is nothing to do with the statistical and our normal understanding because they are empty claims okay so this is what their understanding is but it's up to us which researcher we follow but we just give these reference and we can work with the a mediation analysis okay so let me just conclude with the mediation here so mediation is very simple and not really simple in in terms of theory but in calculation it is really simple okay so for the mediation we'll be looking at indirect effects if the indirect effect is significant the first uh, you know result or the conclusion is that the, there is a mediation if you don't want to go for the further analysis that's fair enough you can just tell them okay this is the indirect effect it is significant it means that according to preacher and here uh, preacher and hayes at all we have this uh, mediation okay now if you want to 
check on whether it is partial or full, there are two important methods. The one is Zahu, and the second one is hair at all. In the hair at all, we will be calculating variation inflation, uh, variation accounted for, sorry, variation accounted for. And in Zahu, we'll be talking about the direct effect with mediator and without mediator in simple word. So we can create tables. I will show you how you can create tables for analyzing these types of the mediations. Okay, so running the analysis on software is very simple, but the theory behind this is just a little bit more complex. Okay, let's move on to the moderation. Now, we understood the mediation. Uh, we understood the process. We understood indirect effects. We understood uh, full and partial mediation. At least this is my understanding. Now, uh, let me just take a little break uh, and ask you if you have any question on the mediation. So if you don't have any question, please go ahead and type yes so we can uh, uh, type okay so i can understand that it's clear if it is clear please go ahead and if you have any confusion in your mind please take this opportunity to ask your question and you know uh, get yourself out of this confusing situation okay any question here okay clear so let's move on with the next thing is a moderator. Unlike mediation, mediation basically explains the way we, you know, uh, explain the relationship between dependent and independent variable. But moderator is a little bit different. Moderator is something which can influence the relationship, not explain the relationship. It can influence the relationship in some cases, it is also named as intervening variable that might not be the direct variable in your research, but that have the ability to influence the relationship between independent and dependent variable. Okay, It is not explaining the relationship, it is influencing the relationship between dependent and independent variable. For example, the weather and your attendance. Okay, So if it is raining, Maybe students are not able to join uh, the sessions. For example, they are not able to travel or maybe it's snowing or something like this. So in that case, it is something which, which reduces the attendance uh, in the uh, classroom. Okay, So that the weather is basically an intervening variable which intervened for some time, but it is not directly part of your uh, models. Okay, In some cases, uh, we have inconsistency between the results of dependent and independent variable. We are not clear whether the independent variable influences the dependent variable or not. In that case, we'll be working with some moderator with, which have ability to influence that uh, relationship, okay? For example, wages and satisfaction. Similarly, the salary and satisfaction. What about the moderator as gender? There might be a difference gender. Gender can you know, influence this relationship. The gender might have, you know, a male have a different uh, sense of satisfaction or the level of satisfaction with the same salary, but the female might have a different level of satisfaction with the same salary. So it means that the gender can influence that relationship. It can strengthen or it can weaken the relationship. Similarly, in the scientific way, we can see that we were using catalyst within the experiments. Okay, so wh what catalysts were doing? The catalyst was just, you know, making this process quick, fast. So this is called a moderation where we have uh, different, you know, uh, uh, inconsistency between the relationships and uh, we want to see whether any variable can influence that relationship and make it more stronger or vice versa, it's, it's your choice. So that moderator is directly not your variable in your research, but that can influence the relationship between your independent and dependent variables, okay? Now, this is the simple definition of moderator. It is, uh, you know, statistically and theoretically different from the mediation. 
that's why the, the analysis of moderation is also different. I mentioned two different types of the moderators. Okay, so the moderators are sometimes we have groups, for example, the way I mentioned the male and female. Okay, so that is a moderator, but it is based on two different groups. Okay, and sometimes we calculate moderator as similar variable as other variables in our research means that the questions. Uh, liquid scale five or four questions to analyze of that particular variable in that case we will be using interaction effects okay so moderation we have group analysis or we can go with the interaction effect so if your variable is not dichotomous it is not nominal you mean that you don't have clear groups in your moderating variable for example age, for example, gender, these are the clear groups if we want to work with that. So in that case, we'll be working with the group analysis. But if this is not the case, your variables are similar variables uh, to the other variables in your model. In that case, your moderator will follow interaction effects, okay? So interaction effect is the most commonly used moderating analysis, but not always it is the case as a moderator, okay? So, uh, maybe when, um, we will be working with some groups, uh, for example, Fayaz just discussed today about the different groups of his, uh, you know, variables, for example, he's collecting data from Pakistan, uh, Canada and Italy, it means that it have three groups, so in that case we'll be working with the group analysis rather than interaction effect. Okay, so that's it from theoretical point of view with the moderations and with the mediation, but uh, it looks a little bit difficult to understand, but it's very simple to calculate. In just one click, you can analyze mediator and moderator, okay? So very simple, but what we analyze and how we can interpret that, it's, you know, it depending on the discussion we just had today, how we can use these uh, different mediators and moderators in our analysis, okay? So I think uh, that was uh, enough for me for this session today. Uh, I think uh, we, we do understand for mediation and moderation. Now, how to run this moderation in Smart PLS? Obviously, I will send you one video. Uh, today, I'll be working on your uh, mediation and moderation analysis as well. So you will be receiving these videos before your next class, okay? On uh, this mediation and moderation. Okay, I think that's it from my side. If any further question, any anything you want to ask? Uh, 